Hi everyone, Ray from Pro String uh, with another racket restringing tutorial, as you may have guessed it already. Um, today's racket will be the Yonex Duora 10 badminton racket. Yeah, so as you can see, I've already clamped my first main. Um, I'm going to take my string out though, just so you guys can see how to start from fresh. Uh, I have cut the string, of course, and we'll be doing. Sorry, I have cut the string. No, this is a uh, the string we're using today is the uh, Yonex Aero Bite, which comes with a thicker main string and a thinner cross string. Um, nice strings to play with if you use um, feather. Try not to use this on plastic. You may uh, may encounter some very quick breaking of strings if you play at least maybe intermediate or advanced level. Uh, grab your two ends, because this is a hybrid, it comes in two pieces, so we have no choice but to do four knots today, which again is two pieces. So there you go. Um, pretty straightforward on how to find your um, um, measurements with the badminton hybrids. Right, cool. Uh, make sure there's a little bit of jingle, guys. Don't apply much pressure on the knobs on the mounting system. Um, don't let the clamp fall, keep the clamp up in line with the string uh, or grommets, and then there you have it. We're gonna pull our first main, which we have, or I have. There's always gonna be a little gap if you, once you pull your first main, regardless of the side you pull it to. And then what I recommend, well, what I recommend is what you should do without fail, is make sure you string three to each side, respectively to each side, to keep the stress off the frame as much as possible. That's my second main. So after this next one, I'm gonna change over to this side. Uh, I do apologize for any phone calls that come in. The phone has been on fire this morning. We are, well, this morning, well, it's now almost 1 p.m. UK time. And there you have it. Uh, by the way, we're stringing at 26 pounds of tension on our mains, and Yonex always recommends half a pound more or 0.2 kgs uh, for your cross strings to keep the isometrical, isometric shape that all badminton Yonex rackets come with. So as you can see, I've swapped over to the other side. Um, how to know, so I've had some problems with this in the past, well, once before the client wasn't specific. Uh, but yeah, always ask your client if you are running a professional restring, and even if you're not, just to avoid any um, uncomfortable uh, arguments or situations. Uh, it does say here, I don't know if you can say it, it says main white band. What they mean by white band, took me an argument with somebody to uh, figure it out with a client, unfortunately, is the color of the plastic tie. So they've got this, it says white band, but it should say tie, plastic white or whatever tie. Uh, Obviously the string the manufacturer uh, abroad, made in Japan, so maybe it's just a miscommunication or maybe I'm just an idiot. But there you go, 067, white band, I cut it off and then you have the black band, the black band uh, for the thinner string. Okay guys, follow the instructions on there, but that's what they mean by white band, um, white or black band. But anyway, another way to tell is, unless the client specifies, is that your main strings are normally going to be thicker than your crosses. You can do it however you want. Um, just take into account strings do come measured to a certain way, but there should be enough, I'd imagine, for either way, and I've done that before as well, so there shouldn't be any issues there. If you're looking to put the thinner string, in this case the 061 mil string on the mains, get ready for great feel, touch, power, also breakage though, you will break very quickly. If you play, if you play weekly at a decent level, you'll be popping those strings just by looking them, looking at them. Um, just looking at the packaging again. That's 061, yeah, and then 067 is the cross string. Very thin strings uh, on the on the uh, on the cross strings. That's where you're going to get loads of feel, touch, and power from. There 
you go. Six on one side, guys. Now exactly the same thing to the other and so on and so on. Be patient, guys. Don't rush. Don't pull lots of strings to one side. Make everything symmetric and even. Again, badminton, especially badminton rackets and strings. They're very delicate. Um, so be very careful. If you are gonna start doing badminton rackets as supplement or part of your you know, already existing stringing business, perhaps tennis and squash you're already doing or one or the other, uh, be careful with badminton especially at the beginning. Be careful with the awl. I wouldn't even recommend using the awl at all, if possible, unless you're quite experienced at tennis and squash. Uh, but even then, even then as experienced I was, uh, when I started badminton around six, seven years ago now, um, I popped my uh, several strings with the awl. Uh, I wish I would have seen a video, maybe of uh, something that I'm doing now or similar. So just watch out with that, guys. A little bit of uh, advice there to you. Right, I'm just checking my cross string. There is no covering. My main that I'm pulling now will not affect my cross string uh, later on, as you can probably see, hopefully you can. There's a cross string that we will pull out eventually here, but the, uh, the main string isn't covering it all that much, so I'm good to go. That's nine on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got six on this side. We now go for three more on this side. Make sure I'm compensating to both sides. I do want to just check my camera ever so slightly. I did a racket before and something happened with the recording and it didn't record anything. It recorded three seconds and I guess I was talking to myself for the best part of 20 something minutes. <laughs> it was actually a, a squash racket with a very interesting uh, stringing pattern but I had finished the racket and no video was made and that's kind of my uh, my intentions with all this content I'm trying to put out there because I get such a large amount of different types of rackets yeah I'm good there as well I would normally use I probably will have to use a, a little string string eight. Oh, 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 oh! I'm getting a little bit of sliding here thin strings sliding over my tension head at the time of time Sometimes it just doesn't catch, uh, but it's normally fine. Wilson Bayardo we're using today, guys. Wilson Bayardo Original. Behind the camera. Um, probably can't see, of course not. Um, there is a Wilson Bayardo Light, also solid machine, cheaper version of this one. Um, however, um, this is a lot better, I find. Anyway. Uh, last string, last cross, uh, last main string, I have up the tension 15%, guys, 15, one five. Recommendable to up your tension on your finishing knots, 15 to 20%. Parnell knot, as you can see, hopefully, maybe you can play it in slow-mo somehow, or see what I've done there. I've made one single knot, and then gone back down and around and back through my first knot, which is a Cornell knot. Taking out as much lag as possible um, from the knot. Let's see if I can do this one a bit slower. Um, pressure's a bit high today. I've got to get to one of my receptions shortly. Uh, phone, like I said, has been on fire today. Uh, people, everybody wants their racket done now, now, now. And most of the time without paying extra, which is not the case with us. We do charge a premium if you want to jump the line or the queue. Eight pounds for 24 to 48 working hours and 10 pounds for on the spot service, which we offer only at our workshops from Hammersmith and Acton. Uh, up the tension again, guys. Again, 15 to 20%, not less than 15, probably not more than 20, regardless if it's a tennis squash or badminton racket. Always keeping you guys a nice sharp edge, which in this case is what's happening to me. My edge is now blunt. Hopefully that does the job. I have a feeling. Okay, we got it. I had a feeling that it might not go through that easily. 
Okay, there you go. So one single knot down, around, and back through the first knot that I've done. And there you have it. Don't pull the knot very hard, guys. You will go through your anchor string. Anchor string is the main one where you're tying your knot. And I've tied it on my eighth main string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Always tying your knots in the same place when you're doing uh, four knots. Two piece stringing system. I'm gonna black tie, thinner string, which is the Yonex Aerobite, as mentioned before. Uh, sorry, is this the Aerobite? Yeah, it is the Aerobite. Why is this? Okay, this is the, but within the Aerobite, this is the Aerosonic, the much thicker of the two. Now be careful when you're cutting the tie off. I used to use a, a nail clipper, but now I feel um, completely comfortable doing that with that. No problem. Just be careful though, because I wish they I wish they did it differently. I really did. Or 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 at least left a bit of space. They leave no space. They tighten the the plastic tie as much as they can. Um, I know that I need seven and a half lengths of a, of a battery and racket. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it as is. Cut myself a nice sharp edge. Guys, do not tie your third, so your starting knot, don't tie it on the string. Why? Because at, you know, even at 26 pounds of tension, you will rip through your main string. Tie a knot outside of the frame. All right, this is a different knot. Don't know the name of it, actually. Call it the, the pro string knot, if you like. Five, 0 0.5 pounds more on your crosses. Yonex recommends to up the tension on your crosses to keep its isometric shape. They're all isometric pretty much. Uh, batteries and rackets. So, um, Yonex batteries and rackets. There you go. Lots of covering of holes here, unfortunately, no way around it. But at least with this aerosonic string, it's quite thin. So we can get through normally quite easily. Not always the, the case. Um, I'm actually going to cut a little bit more off. I'm going to cut this off because I know I just have so much string left over. Don't cut too much, guys. Especially if you're just starting out for whatever the reason. Imagine uh, you break the string or God knows what. Right at the beginning, you may be able to salvage it all. through I've got lots of covering here and we're going through a shared hole got myself a nice sharp edge that felt like it was going better and there it is oh oh there we go. right we're through you are going to pull the first two I'm gonna press my knot button 15% more I'm going to add uh, I'm going to pass through the string. You can see my edge has fluffed up again with that last shared hole. Uh, I'm adding a little bit extra tension. Why? I'm going to pull both strings at the same time, which is a big no-no normally. But when it comes to badmintons, if you're doing a four piece, because you're tying the knot outside, uh, there tends to be quite a bit of slipping. But now with the slightly higher tension, just always watching my knot as well, just to be safe. This is, wow, very tight. But okay, we've tied two strings, so we're all good. Don't do that anymore. Only want to pull two strings at the same time, as if you're doing a badminton hybrid regardless of the top, uh, hybrid or four knot, should I say, as well. Um, because if you pull one string at a time, guys, I mean, my knot, I wouldn't say it's in the inside the racket, but it has tight, it has gone further in than I would have expected, than I, or than what I experienced normally. But because it's such a thin string, 
Um, there you have it. It should be fine though. Shouldn't have any issues there. And I am using a system called one ahead. So you're probably thinking, oh, I'm pulling, I'm pulling two strings through. Yes, I am. Uh, the one that I've already done and the next one, one ahead, just makes everything that little bit easier uh, when you're weaving that second one through, let's say. All right, my edge is not sharp enough again. I'm really hoping that it'll go through nice and easy because if not, I will need to get my all. I really don't like using the all for any rackets, but especially with badminton because you're playing with fire every time you're using the all. It's such a... Um, badminton strings are so thin, so when you're using your all, you need to be incredibly careful. I'm going to get rid of my knot carefully. <clears throat> Happy with that though. That knot is actually going almost unnoticeable. It's, it's tightened up very close to the frame, to the grommet, let's say, but without going through. I hope that doesn't change because such a thin string. All right. So I've locked my base on my stringing machine. I don't know if yours has that function because I have this in the way and I want the string to be not clashing with my uh, uh, mounting support piece. So remember guys, this is the Yonex Duora. D-U-O-R-A, Duora. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. 10. 22 by 22 mains, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, uh, 22 mains by 22 crosses. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I stand corrected. 21 crosses. Uh, I have much, much, much more experience in tennis than squash and badminton, but that's not to say uh, I do a bad job. I just don't remember by head or by heart all the different stringing patterns like I do in tennis. You show me a tennis racket and if you give me the exact model of that, but I'm just going to look at a few here. The Ezo 98, which is the new one, 1619 Pure Drive, 1619 Pure Arrows are 1619 as well. Uh, the Selinka Whiteout, I believe, is also 1619. Might be even less. 1619 it is, yeah. Uh, all the diadems here, the Wilson blades are 16, 19s, the, so much as the 98 and the uh, 100 square V8 blades. Um, so, I mean, yeah, with tennis, I know them all. But with badminton, not so much. I do string a lot of badmintons though as well, but it's something that I, that I don't, they don't come written on the racket. You get the size of the grip, I think, normally, and the, and, um, and the tension recommendations on most badminton rackets, most, not all, even sometimes. So sometimes I'm finding myself having to Google uh, this type of stuff. And then a lot of times I come here. So here you go, 19 to 26. So we're on the, uh, very much so on the borderline. This, this is a top end racket, so it should handle more than 26. I don't encourage it though. I don't encourage it, because I do tell people, listen, your racket, your racket says 26 pounds max. You want me to go 28, 29? I'm happy to do so. But I want you to know that it's not my fault. If your racket breaks, is uh, I don't want you running back to me saying, you know, I broke your racket because I'll tell you that your racket is 26 pounds max. Your choice, what you want me to do with it later. But do not come back later saying that I broke your racket because of X, Y, and Z. So respect the tensions, at least on badminton rackets. Tennis and squash is very different. The frames are much more, uh, they're much thicker. They're much more... Uh, durable, they're just different. They're just, you know, I mean, if you just look at the shaft alone, I mean, look at, you know, and that's the shaft. You know, it's meant to bend, of course, yes, I know. But, I mean, you could, I mean, I don't know, but I'd like to think you'd be able to crack a badminton racket with your bare hands without making too much effort, at least in the head. If I put it over my knee, I'm sure I'd be able to break a, a badminton racket. Well, at least quite sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just going to tighten that up. Feels like it's got a little bit loose. Not that it's loose. It's just a little bit 
looser than my other clamp, which feels really nice, but this is the, the thinner, the thinner string of the two. Client was quite specific with the color they wanted, blue and white, which I got for them, no problems. if they wanted a new grip as well they may have texted me actually saying that they didn't put it on the label we do have labels for every racket high demands we need to make sure everybody has a label and that they're specific with what they want because um, it just makes our life easier if we don't understand something then um, we always call our clients to avoid any confusion sometimes everything seems clear but they meant something else, which is really crappy because then it makes us look bad and they just get upset. Please restring it free of charge. But life is not always that simple. You need to be very clear when it comes to this. I want an orange grip. I want a blue grip. I want my strings to be blue and white. I want. Most people don't care about colors and stuff like that. Um, I would think. No. But I think no. I know from dealing with general public uh, day and night. However, you know, sometimes you do get the client that comes over and he's like, no, 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 I wanted that. I told you, I didn't tell you, and it gets a bit messy. Um, so just saying, same string, that doesn't cut it, guys. Um, when you bring your racket to us and you just put on our label, same string, okay, you might not know what the string is, um, but if you want the same string and the same color, then say that, same string, same color. And then that way we can get it right for us. It's just, you know, specific. So, you know, if you are running a, a stringing company or whatever, you're probably familiar with this type of stuff. But, you know, enforce that. When the person drops the racket off with you or to one of your places or whatever, depending on your business model, tell them, hey, <laughs> you need to be, uh, please let me know. Is there anything specific you'd like to, for us to do? Whether it be uh, stenciling. We, stencil, we don't stencil the rackets anymore. I did uh, once upon a time at the beginning when I started Pro String. Uh, time consuming time 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 if you're really that fussed about having a stencil on your racket then you will tell me it's not something I ask clients because I'd rather not give them that option um, I hate I, I, I've never charged for a stencil I don't think uh, I had a client bring four rackets of the day uh, wanted stenciling uh, all his all his badminton racket stenciling to the point of I think was one wasn't even done by myself but hey, I'm happy to do it. It's a bit of ink we're talking about. It's a few, a few pennies. I don't know how some people can charge for it. But everyone is different, so by all means, it is a service. You ask something, but I mean, they shouldn't be charging more than like a pound, a dollar, a euro, so on. I mean, unless you really hate it and you don't want to do stenciling, then just tell people you don't offer that service. Um, but I think it's crazy to be charging people for if they've strung a racket with you then i think it's just it's unnecessary to charge them i get it it's your time and it can take two to three minutes the whole process getting your ink getting your uh whatever it is used underneath the racket so you don't dirty the, the whatever it is the floor the table i get it and then of course you know you no one gives us the ink for free i mean there are sometimes brands and stuff that might give you a freebie uh it looks good from them to see those stencils on rackets and stuff, but normally you won't get these things for free, so I get it. No, nobody gives us anything for free, so why should we? But I mean, it's just a, a really nice gesture of goodwill to, to put some ink on someone's racket. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not the hardest thing in the world. If you're you know, really busy, then just don't offer it. Don't offer it. But then again, it's okay to charge for it. If that's what you want to do, hey, charge for it. Remember, be nice to your clients, guys. You want them to come back. So, small things like that. I'm not saying give them a free overgrip. But, yeah. Try to be nice to them. Doesn't hurt. All right, we're coming up to the end, guys. 10 past one UK time. Check my phone real quick.
Just checking, someone's asking me about demo rackets. 285, 285, 310. I don't have anything in 285. Somebody's asking for the pure drive, the Babylon pure drive, which I only have in 300s. Um, lots of different, there's lots of rackets in the tennis world with the same paint job. They look exactly the same, but different weights. I've just found myself a little cracked grommet here. It should be okay. It's protecting the string well enough. Uh, it didn't catch my eye because uh, simply they're very hard to, to see sometimes, even when you're inspecting the, the grommets and everything, which I do always before starting each uh, badminton racket and tennis squash and bad, uh, tennis squash as well. But with the badminton, it's because it's black and it's black on black. Sometimes, depending on the light you might have, it can, uh, it can look better or worse. Or should I say it's easier to spot or not easier? Less or more easier to spot. Oops, I put the knot up. Then the, uh, I hit my knot button by accident. I'm not ready for that. That will be now. So yeah, the grommets, I mean, I checked all of them and they all seemed in pretty, pretty good condition, so it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, there, there, these two here, this last, second last cross, both sides uh, are damaged. So if I ever see this racket again, I will tell the client, however, I'm, I mean, I'm bidding them anyway for three or four, change four grommets at the top that I did find that were in poor condition. Um, so that would have been six in total, but hey, we try to be as perfect as we can. But like I said, you know, black on black sometimes, uh, the inner black of this racket where they, uh, the other two were here and here. Or actually just here, just this side. Didn't catch that one, but it's not awful. Let's say it's not completely awful. Um, but yeah, next time I'll definitely catch that one if I see this or recognize the the racket or client's name because it's very hard to. Not everyone has lots of different people have the same type of racket, so I'd have to tell either by inspecting or the person's name, which I may or may not remember. So I pulled my knot, my Parnell knot. Cut the string. There you guys go. I am pretty happy with this stringing job as I am normally with my own work. Maybe I'm biased. Uh, but anyway, all good in the hood. I'm gonna straighten up my strings, make it all look very nice and smooth. Um, however, not much to do here because they're all quite straight. Alright, guys, there you have it. Wow. 26 by 26 and a half. Uh, your next Duora 10. Duora 10. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope there's um, some helpful stuff on there for you. And uh, have a good one. Happy stringing, guys. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.